muscles of the head divided into mimic muscles and masticatory muscles. Features of the mimic muscles located under the skin not covered with fascia concentrated around natural holes act as compressors and expanders begin from bone points of fascia and in the skin change its relief according to its location mimic muscles divide into muscles of the cranial wart orbicularis oculi muscles nasalis muscles orbicularis oris muscles and auricular muscles the epicranius muscle musculus epicranius consists of the occipital frontalis muscle musculus occipital frontalis epicranial aponeurosis calia aponeurotica and tempora parietalis muscle musculus tempora parietalis the occipital frontalis muscle consists of the frontal and the occipital parts which are connected to each other by means of epicranial aponeurosis, which looks like a strong fibrous plate. The frontal belly begins with the epicranial aponeurosis and is woven into the skin of the eyebrows. The occipital belly begins at the top of the line and forms the base of the mastoid process and ends in the epicranial aponeurosis. The temporalis muscle is the lateral part of the epicranial muscle. It begins on the inside of the cartilage of the auricle, in which it is formed, consumed and attached to the epicranial aponeurosis. The occipital belly uh, pulls the scalp back, creating support to the frontal belly. The frontal belly pulls the skin up, transverse folds form on the forehead, temporal muscle is rudimental. Orbicularis oculi muscle is elliptical, lies under the skin in the thickness of the eyelids and around the entrance to the orbit. Muscle consists of three parts, the orbital parts. The outer white part of the muscle begins on the nadal part of the frontal bone, the frontal processes of the upper jaw and medial ligaments of the eyelid go in concentric arches to the outer corner of the eye. The palpebral part starts from the medial ligament of the eyelid and adjacent sections of the medial wall of the orbit goes to the lateral angle eyes where the bundles of the upper and lower eyelids intertwine. Uh, the lacrimal part originates from the posterior lacrimal crest is woven into the wall of the lacrimal sac and the palpebral part. The lacrimal part extends the lacrimal sac. The palpebral part closes the eyelids. The orbital part of the muscle forms folds in the orbit, pulls the eyes brows down. The skin of the cheek up. Corrugata supercilii muscle. It or origins from medial part of the superciliary arch. It inserts to eyebrow skin. The action of this muscle is pulling the skin of the eyebrow downward and medially, and also produces vertical wrinkles of the forehead. The procerus muscle. It origins from the midline of the nasal bone and from the nasal cartilage. It inserts into the skin of the lower part of the forehead. The action of this muscle producing a transverse fold across the root of the nose. Nasalis muscle consists of the transverse and dalar parts. The transverse part starts uh, from the upper jaw high and lateral to the upper incisors, goes upward and medially to the nadal bridge, where through tendon stretching connects to the same muscle of the opposite side. The other part starts lower and medial to the transverse part, 
and attaches to the skin of the alley of the nose. The transverse part of the muscle compresses the nostrils and may completely close them. The other part and lengthens the nose and delays the nostrils. The orbicular oris consists of two parts, the marginal and labial. The marginal part formed by muscle bundles that fit to upper and lower lips from the mimic muscles which close the two mouth muscle. The labial part lies in the thickness of the upper and lower lips. Both parts are woven into the skin and mucous membrane and are also connected to each other in mouth angles. The obical oris closes the mouth and pulls lips forward. Zygomaticus maya and zygomaticus minor muscles. It origins from zygomatic bone near its suture with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and the skin of the corner of the mouth is attached from the part to the mucous membrane of the cheek. These muscles pull uh, the corner of the mouth to the outside and to the top. Levata labia superioris. It origins from infraorbital margin of the maxilla. It inserts into the skin of the upper lip. This muscle lifts the upper lip. Levata angulae oris. It's covered uh, by two muscles, by nasalis muscle and zygomaticus maya muscles. It origins from canine fossa. It inserts into the angle of the mouth. This muscle lift the angle of the mouth, thus participating in creating a smile. Buccinata muscle is thin, quadrangular, forms the muscle base of the cheek. It origins from alveolar processes of the maxilla and mandible at the region of the first and second molar teeth and from the pterygomandibular rafa. It inserts into the angle of the mouth, radiating into the fibers of the orbicularis oris muscle. This muscle pulls the angle of the mouth laterally, presses the cheeks to the teeth. Depressor labia inferioris, it partially covered by depressor anguli oris. It origins from the obliquely line of the base of the mandible. It inserts into the skin of the lower lip. The muscle pulls the lower lip downwards and forward. Fisorius begins on the masseteric fascia, goes forward and medially attaches to the skin of the corner of the mouth, pulls the corner of the mouth laterally forms a dimple on the cheek, usually weakly expressed, often absent. The pressa anguli oris has a triangular shape. Origins from the lower edge of the lower jaw covers the chin hole and it inserts into the skin of the angle of the mouth. This muscle pulling the angle of the mouth downward. Auricular muscles in human are poorly developed. Distinguish anterior muscle, superior muscle, and posterior muscle. They can only provide movement of the auricle in some people. Masticatory muscles originate on the skull and insert onto the mandible. This acting upon the mastication and other movements of the lower jaw at the temporal mandibular joint. Masticatory muscle has a rectangular form. It divides into a superficial head, which origins from the uh, temporal process of zygomatic bone and from the anterior two-thirds of the inferior border of the zygomatic arch. 
and inserts into mosateric tuberosity of the mandible. The deep head origins from the posterior third of the lower border and from the whole of the medial surface on the zygomatic arch. It inserts into the upper half of the ramus as high as the coronoid process of the mandible. This muscle elevate the mandible. Temporalis muscle is fun shaped. Its origins from the temporal plane on the side of the cranium. It inserts into the coronoid process of the mandible. This muscle elevates and retracts the of mandible. Medial pterygoid. This muscle locates on the medial surface of the mandible. It origins from the pterygoid fossa of the sphenoid bone. It inserts to pterygoid tuberosity of the mandible. Medial pterygoid elevates mandible, closes jaw, helps lateral pterygoids in moving the jaw from side to side. Lateral pterygoid it origins with two heads, superior head and inferior head. Superior head located in infratemporal surface and infratemporal crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Inferior head located in the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. This muscle inserts to anterior side of the candle capsule of the tempra mandibular joint and articular disc. This muscle depresses mandible, protrude mandible and provide side to side movement of mandible. Thank you for your attention.